Last Friday, I finally finished and released my hour-long Starship special, so today we'll be catching up on what SpaceX has been up to these last couple of weeks. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Since Starship 259's launch of Flight Test 2 on November 18th, much has been going on behind the scenes at Starbase Texas in preparation for number three. But nostalgia lingers in the air, Elon tweeting a week after the event that it's still hard to believe Starship is real. And who can blame him? It's not every day you get to witness a record-breaking fireworks show. The man is already pushing forward and upward, posting, we need to be on Mars by 2033. Whew. Why such urgency, my man? Shameless self-promotion plug opportunity. As the mission to Mars moves ahead, SpaceX just installed the sign of its name to its launch site. And it lit up, because that's what SpaceX does. Light things up. Beautiful. I'm sure it's no coincidence that they completed it the day I completed my documentary. Have I mentioned it's available to watch right now? If you do watch it, you'll also learn of the sign's historical relation that is also no coincidence. Just a little while ago, SpaceX did share their professionally put together recap of the flight. You can watch the thing in its entirety, but only after you watch my Starship special for the first or second or tenth time. I won't know, but Jesus will. Before the next test flight can take off, new upgrades to the gateway to Mars must be completed. Like the installation of some new utilities that will be less prone to dings and dents. I've been told SpaceX may be doing away with a vertical tank farm, replacing it with new horizontal tanks that were recently delivered. And I've also been told that pieces of a second launch tower are making their way to the gateway from Florida. Starship itself also continues to be upgraded, Elon posting a picture of a flock of starships at the high bay, the last of version 1. Version 2 holds more propellant, reduces drive mass, and improves reliability. Lab Padre Space and his team also sharing a picture of a new test barrel for the ships, with what appears to be a more effective method of mounting thermal tiles. After all, some of them did abandon ship during test flight 2. It looks like Ship 28 could be the next victim in line, and Booster 10 being the lucky winner to carry her fat load to space. She received her hot staging crown at the high bay and was then moved down to the Sanchez site on the 5th, where Lab's team located a gathering of Starlink ground stations. Super serially, if you don't support Lab Padre Space, shame on you. For shame! Link in the description. Concerning Artemis 3, Space Policy Online reported the other day that Starship will attempt a propellant transfer demo for the next test flight. How can that be, you may be wondering, since such an event requires two ships? But that will not be the case for this pre-test of sorts. The vehicle itself will internally transfer prop between the header tank and the larger main tank while in microgravity. The Government Accountability Office released their latest report on the Artemis timeline, noting NASA has made progress since its last report but still faces challenges developing the lunar lander and spacesuits, and therefore is unlikely to land HLS in 2025 as planned. Specifically, calling out the delays with testing Starship, which we know had something to do with the government itself, and writing that Artemis 3 will likely occur in early 2027. SpaceX must complete a significant amount of complex technical work to support the lunar landing mission, including developing the ability to store and transfer prop while in orbit, which may be the reason why the company is moving forward with the mini transfer test during Test Flight 3. Moving on, SpaceX has launched a half dozen Falcon 9 missions since I last reported on their non-Starship activities a few weeks ago. All but one were Starlink missions, the other was a spy satellite for one of the Koreas, probably the South one. After all, North Korea can now place its own spy satellites into orbit, so they say. So that's great for humanity. That's great, right? Space is for everyone, after all. Go humanity. Derp. Super seriously, guys, watch my special. I am super, super serial. SpaceX has now completed more than 252 landings of a Falcon first stage, since they did land two more after this one on December 1st, 178 of them consecutively. Elon wrote that his company is tracking to launch over 80% of all Earth payloads to orbit this year. PC Mag reported that the FCC is allowing SpaceX to move forward with a modified version of their previously authorized Gen 2 Starlink satellites, so it can be verified that they work for cellular service with T-Mobile smartphones. Coming up on Sunday evening, we have an expected Falcon Heavy launch carrying the Space Force's X-37B orbital test vehicle for its seventh mission. I do plan on going live for it, so sub to the channel and join me for that. Fate does not love irony, she lusts it. Amazon announced they signed a deal with SpaceX for three Falcon 9 launches. Falcon will be hauling satellites for Project Kuiper, which is basically its own mini Starlink constellation thing. Because Vulcan, New Glenn, and Ariane 6 rockets are all running behind in development, and Amazon does have an FCC deadline to meet. 
But I'll finish with the best news of the last few weeks. SpaceX has acquired shoot manufacturer Pioneer Aerospace, which provides parts for Dragon's Drogue shoots, which SpaceX will now own the intellectual property rights to. The shoot bras filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy when SpaceX took them for 2.2 million musk bucks, which is probably less than it would have cost to find a new drug shoot provider, bra. So I'm gonna wrap it up here for this one, but it was good seeing you. Do watch my Starship special if you haven't seen it yet. I'm seeing great feedback from most of those who have, so thank you guys for the love. However, I'm also over the target with the possessed, and their gnashing of teeth are the best reviews, because it only proves the plot. So a nominal weekend to all. And until next time, Godspeed.